Hey guys, my name is James and this is my first poker vlog. I'm gonna be showing you some of the most interesting hands from my last poker session. Here I play 1-3 at my local casino, which is Talk and Stick Resort here in Arizona. If you enjoy the content, it would mean a lot to me if you leave a like, drop a comment below, as well as subscribe. With that being said, let's get to the first hand. Welcome to the very first hand of the vlog. I'm sitting on the boat with ace five of clubs. There's an undergun straddle and two players make the call. Folds to me and I decided to bump it up to $30 and all three of those players end up making the call. We're going four ways to a flop, which comes queen, five, three with two spades. Everybody checks to me. Now I could check it back or bet. Uh, this time I decided to bet small to protect my pair of fives from being outdrawn by a flush draw or a higher pair. Uh, I bet $40 and everybody ends up making the fold. We win the first hand. All right, for this next hand, I figured out how to fix my camera, which is always a good thing. I have 10, eight of hearts in middle position. Bolts to me, I decide to raise it up to $12. I get three callers. Flop comes 975 rainbow, but there is a heart. It checks to me, and I decide to bet $35 with my open ended straight draw. Small blind's the only person that calls. We're going heads up to a turn, which comes an offsuit ace. So, on the surface, this doesn't look like a great card for me, but I'm more likely to have an ace than my opponent is. And so, when he checks to me, I decided to bet pretty large here. I bet $75. Again, this, this card is very good for my range. And even if I do get called, uh, I have the chance to improve into my straight. It doesn't end up coming to that. My opponent decides to make the fold, and we take it down. For this next hand, I'm sitting on the button pocket eights, facing a $15 open, and I decide to make the call. Going heads up to a flop, which comes queen seven six. Our opponent decides to bet $15 once again. And the second pair, I decide to make the call. Turn comes an offsuit three. Uh, now, not much comes on this turn except for four five for the straight. But besides that, I'm still ahead of the same hands I was ahead on the flop. Uh, I'm still losing the same hands I was losing to on the flop for the most part. So, from what I've noticed, my opponent's pretty spewy. I've seen him bet bottom pair all three streets. So, when I have a pair as good as second pair, it's kind of hard for me to justify folding to uh, two or even three bets on safe four textures. So I make the call. The river comes an offsuit deuce. My opponent decides to bet $50. And I'm just not buying what he's selling. Um, sure, he could be betting a queen all three streets. But I think it's just more likely that he's bluffing based off uh, prior history with his opponent. I decide to make the call. And he shows ace high. Let me take it down. For this next one, I have pocket tents in middle position. Holds to me and I decide to make it $12. We get a call from the button and the big one. Going three ways to a flop, which comes jack eight seven with a flush draw. Checks to me, but on a board this way, I just decide to pot control a little bit and I check. The button decides to check it back. Now the turn comes a very interesting one that is the ten of clubs. Now obviously I make a set, but I lose to any nine or flushes. Checks to me, and I just can't bet this turn, uh, especially against two opponents. I could be way, way behind, and I don't want to be blown off my hand because I could still be drawn into full houses, potentially cooler my opponents. I decide to check, and my opponent checks it back once again. Now the river comes an offsuit king. Checks to me for the third time, and at this point, uh, I figure I can maybe get a little bit of value from maybe a river top pair or a random two pair at least. Uh, I don't think it's very likely that uh, anybody has a 9 because I think I'd be facing a bet by now. So I decided to bet $15, which is pretty small. Now the button does something really interesting and he decides to raise to 40 uh, The other opponent gets out of the way and comes back to me. And I can't really think of any hands that my opponent would be doing this with. I don't think he'd be playing a 9 this way, a flush this way. I feel like all those combos would be betting the turn. Uh, and so when he just bets the river, I, I don't really know what could be raising here. Uh, my best guess in the moment is that maybe he rivered uh, two pair and decides to get a little bit of value. Anyways, I decide to call and he shows ace queen for the rivered straight. Yeah, the way he played his hand makes a lot more sense. He just checks the flop and the turn with essentially nothing and then rivers the nut straight. So anyways, we lose this one and just move on. All right, for this one, I have ace 10 offsuit in the big blind. The under the gun player makes it $10. Another player calls and I call. Going three ways to a flop, which comes ace, deuce, three with a flush draw. I check it. The under the gun player bakes at 15. The other player gets out of the way. And then I decide to make the call here with top pair. Turn brings a four. Now any five makes a straight here. 
I should be the only player here that should have a five, so I'm not really worried about the straight. I'm only concerned about better top pairs, such as ace-jack, ace-queen, or ace-king. I decided to check it back to the aggressor, and he checks it back. Now the river pairs the board, brings a three. I'm not really worried about a three. I'm only really concerned about, like I said, bigger top pairs. I check it with the intention of calling a smaller size bet, but he checks it back, and we win. Okay, this is a big hand alert. I'm sitting in the small blind with 10 nine of spades and about $450 in my stack. It folds to the cutoff and makes it $12, and the button calls. Now I could just call here, but I actually like three bet raising here as a bluff, just because my opponent on the button is a pretty decent player, and I don't want to be playing hands against him out of position. So I make it $50, but it actually ends up folding to him, and he makes the call. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes queen, jack, seven, with a flush draw. I actually like this flop a lot, because my opponent should never really have pocket queens or jacks here. He could have queen jack suited or potentially pocket sevens, but my range is a lot stronger than him on this board because I could have pocket queens or jacks or all the over pairs, and I have a lot of equity here with my open ended straight draw. So I decided to bet large here. I go with the sizing of $75. He thinks for a little bit and ends up making the call. We're going to the turn, which comes in offsuit 10. My hand does improve, but based off the action on the flop, I don't think I'm ahead here almost ever. I think it's very likely that my opponent's weighted towards a one pair hand. I think it's very unlikely that my opponent could have ace king here or even king nine for the straight. So on this turn, I have a pretty decent amount of equity. And I decided to bet $300, which is a little bit over pot. Here in Arizona, uh, all of our games are actually spread limit, at least at the time of this recording. So the maximum bet on any street is $300. So I decided to bet that much, but the maximum amount of pressure on my opponent. And again, even though my hand improved, the reason why I'm turning it into a bluff here is just because I think my opponent's weighted towards hands like ace-queen, maybe king-queen, and I think I can get all those hands to fold by putting a large bet here on the turn. Anyways, he thinks for a decent while. I have only about 20 more dollars in my stack, so if he does end up raising, I just have to call. But it doesn't come to that. He ends up making the fold, and we get this big bluff through. Okay, non-stop action with this one. We have pocket aces under the gun. We make it $12. Holds all the way to the big blind, makes the call. Now this is the same opponent as last hand. I have a lot of respect for his play, so I'm gonna be a little bit careful trading post flop. Anyways, the flop comes 10, 9, 7, two clubs. We do have the ace of clubs. He checks it to me and I make it $15. Now he check raises to $65. Now I can't full pocket aces this early. I make the call. The turn comes in off suit six. Now pretty much all the straight draws that would have check raised the flop get there. but. He does something interesting, he checks. If you would have actually bet this turn, I would have folded. But instead, I'm just going to check it back. Now the river comes with three of clubs, and he bets a really small sizing of $40. Now I think about it, his line doesn't make too much sense to have a flush or even a straight here. I feel like all straights would have bet the turn. And if he would have had a flush draw, I think he would have bet the turn two, or at least much bigger on the river. But since he bets this small, and I have the ace of clubs, he can never have the nuts here. But I also don't think this $40 is necessarily a bluff. I think it's very likely that he has two pair, or perhaps a set here, but this is not a good board for either of those two holdings. And since he can't have the nuts, and I can, because I have the ace of clubs, I decided to actually do a bluff raise here. This is pretty rare for these stakes, but I trust that my opponent is a thinking player, and he can put the pieces together and realize that he's probably not good here. Anyways, I make it $150. In hindsight, I probably should have bet a little bit bigger, maybe closer to 180 or so. But regardless, I make it 150 and he thinks for a little bit, but he decides to make the fold, and we get two big bluffs back to back through. Yeah, this whole recording thing while I'm playing is pretty new. A little uncomfortable for me, honestly. I'm just trying to sneak my camera in when I can. Kind of sucks. I feel like I'm missing some of the hands, and I don't know how good my footage is going to be. I'm getting, I'm feeling more comfortable while doing it. Oh uh, yeah, those those two bluffs I just did, pretty big and also kind of uncomfortable to make. People don't like to fold at these stakes, but I just felt like those were two were really good opportunities to bluff, especially against that specific opponent. I know he's a He's a good thinking player, and I think he's smart enough to know that he's usually not good in either of those scenarios um, based off the range that I think he's playing those hands with. Yeah, I felt really good about my plays. I, one small hand where I called a river raise, but 
a really small pot. Other than that, I think I feel like I'm playing pretty good. Uh, I'm just happy to be able to record these hands and get them out to you. Now this is a pretty interesting one. I have King 10 offsuit in the big blind. The under the gun player limps. The button makes it $10 and we both end up calling. We're going three ways to a flop, which comes King 6-6 six, six with a flush draw. I flop top pair on a pretty connected board. I check it. Now the under the gun player donks $15. The button ends up making the call and I come along too. Now the turn gives us a full house. Comes another king. I check. Now the under the gun player bets again $25. And the button bets again. I debate raising here. But I think if I raise here, it just pretty much tells everybody that I have a king. And it's not possible for both of the, my opponents to have a king. So I decide to call again for deception. The river rolls off an offsuit four. I debate leading, but I decide on checking. The under the gun player bets $75. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. The button just tables his hand and he has pocket aces and he folds. Honestly, I don't really know what to do here. I'm supposed to be raising here because I only lose to quads, but since the button gave me information that the under the gun player wasn't able to use, I decided to just call. The under the gun player shows king eight and we chop. For this one, I'm sitting on the button with ace eight suited. There's two limpers in front of me and I decided to make it $18. Both the limpers end up calling. Going three ways to a flop, which comes king six, seven, rainbow. They both end up checking to me. I decided to check it back. Turn comes a nine. They check again to me. This time I decide to make it $30 with my open ended straight draw. Only the first limper calls. Going heads up to a river, which comes another seven. This time she decides to donk $50. I don't really have a choice here, so I just fold. In this hand, I make it $12 under the gun with pocket eights. Both the button and the big blind make the call. We go three ways to a flop, which comes ace, four, three, all hearts. Big blind checks, I check. The button does a little heart check, but he decides to make it $10. Big blind gets out of the way, and I make the call. I do have the eight of hearts, so it's less likely that he has a heart in his hand. The turn comes in off suit three. I check with the intention of calling a small bet, but the button checks it back. The river comes in off suit king. At this point, I don't really think my opponent has an ace or a flush. So if he were to bet here, it'd have to be with the king of hearts going for really small value. And if he does bet a reasonable size, I will call. But after I check, he checks it back and our pair of eights is good. For this last one, I have an ace eight offsuit on the button. There's a limp right before me. And I decided to make it $15, both the blinds and the limper call. Four ways to a flop, which comes ace 10 four with two hearts. Checks to me. I decided to check this one back for pot control. Off to a turn, which comes in offsuit nine. Checks to me again for a second time. I decided to bet only $30 here for value and only the small blind calls. Heads up to a river, which comes the nine of hearts. My opponent checks for a third time. Now, honestly, this is a pretty bad river. Obviously flushes get there, but besides that, I can't think of any worse hands that would call a bet here. I chop with any other ace that was beaten before. If I were to bet here, I'm only really trying to get value from a 10. I don't really think I'm gonna get better to fold here. So I decided to check this one back and he shows Jack nine for trips. I didn't really get any more interesting hands after this. So I decided to wrap it up and call it a day. All right, so that session's a wrap. Um, I, I, I feel decent about the session. Just couldn't get a lot going. Uh, I didn't really make super strong hands. I barely made better than a pair to be able to book a win in a session like that. It's always pretty awesome. Uh, I was I played for almost four hours and won about two hundred dollars, two hundred seventeen dollars. So that's nice. Can't complain. I don't feel super bad about any of the hands I played. Wouldn't really change much. I feel pretty content with my level of play. Uh, if you made it this far, I just want to give a huge thank you for watching these videos. Um, plan to put out one or two a week. So. If that interests you, just drop a like and a comment and I'll be responding to all the comments. Thank you.